Hey everyone! Today I'm going to be showing you a little bit of my process for creating a piece like this entirely in Blender, using both 3D and 2D elements with Grease Pencil. We'll start with some basic 3D modeling, then materials, and finally finishing it up with the magic of Grease Pencil. Please note this isn't for complete beginners, as I won't be going into detail about everything that I'm doing but I'm using fairly simple techniques here, so hopefully you should be able to follow along. A quick setup before we get started. I'm using the EV Render Engine, and I have my shadows maxed out with high bit depth checked. And in color management, I have my view transform set to standard. I also have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled under Preferences, as this makes our life a little bit easier when using the Shader Editor. Starting with a simple cube, I am scaling it outwards and grabbing that top face up to give us the basis of our vending machine shape. I also add a little bevel here to give us some nice rounded edges. Using a little cylinder, I model out a little leg before adding a mirror modifier and using the cube as the mirror object so that we get a leg on all four sides. I then add in a circle object to act as our ground plane. Here I am just renaming all the objects and adding them into a collection not only to keep them organized, but we'll need all our meshes in a collection for use with grease pencil later. I like to get a camera in early in my scenes just so I can figure out the overall shot and composition of the piece. I also set the scene resolution to 1080 by 1080 so that we have a nice square aspect ratio. Just messing around with the camera settings here as well till I find something that I like. I then start to model out the machine a little more by adding a loop cut through the middle and using I to inset that top face before extruding it inwards. I do the same with the bottom face here but scaling it down and moving it over to the side a little to create the little collection point at the bottom. I take another cube here and start modeling out the shelves at the top of the machine. Before adding an array modifier, setting the count to 3 and using the Z factor to duplicate those shelves upwards. I add another cylinder, rotate it 90 degrees, flatten it out and give it a little bevel to create a nice front panel. I then duplicate it, scale it down to create a second one. I create another cube and scale it down to create our little change tray at the bottom of the machine. Using Ctrl and F2 here allows me to quickly rename multiple objects. I also drop these new objects into our mesh collection. Enabling proportional editing at the top there, I scale out the top of our machine to give us a bit more of a stylized look. I also select all of our objects with A, right click and shade auto smooth. Using another cylinder, I start to model out the little selection buttons. Once again, just flattening it out and adding a little bevel.
I use two array modifiers here, one to fill out the buttons to the side and another to copy them upwards onto the other shelves. There is also a mirror modifier in between those two using the machine as the mirror object to keep those buttons nice and symmetrical. Finally, it's time to model the contents of our vending machine. Starting with a cylinder, I add a few loop cuts and scale the top and bottom faces to create the shape of a can. I then duplicate that and pull the top face up before extruding to create the shape of a bottle. Duplicating it again and using the same techniques, I create a second bottle variation. Hitting Alt-Z here allows me to see through the mesh, which lets me select all the vertices at the back of the object as well, making editing a little easier. I bring them over to the machine before making a few scale adjustments. And I won't fill out the machine just now, as I'll do that when creating materials for them. But with that, the 3D portion of this scene is complete. I start by switching the window at the bottom over to the shader editor, changing our view to rendered mode, and bringing in a sun lamp as our light source. I change the strength to somewhere around 10 and rotate it so that the light is coming in from the right side and casting a shadow on the left. I'll be using a very simple tune shader for this project and to set that up we just need to take our principled BSDF, plug that into a shader to RGB node and finally into a color ramp. Setting the color ramp to constant, we can now use these two points to change both our light and shadow color. You can add more points using the plus button on the color ramp, but I felt two colors was enough for this material. A little tip for our shadow color, I not only darken the value, but also shift the hue a little towards blue and boost the saturation just a tad. This helps our colors feel a lot more vibrant and natural. For our other objects, I take the same material we just made and hit the little number next to the name to make an editable copy of the material. Using the same techniques as before, I adjust the colors as I see fit. To quickly add the same material to other objects, select all the objects you want and finally select the object with the material you want to copy Hit Ctrl L and select Link Materials. Now you can repeat the process with your other objects. Let's quickly set up the background colour for our scene by changing the shader editor from object to world. Now by default, changing the background colour here will affect the lighting in our scene, but to fix that we can duplicate the background node and by holding Ctrl, Shift and right click dragging between the two, we create a mix shader. Next, we'll add a light path node and plug the is camera ray option into the factor of our mix shader. This essentially separates the color and the lighting of our background. And by using the bottom background node, we can adjust the color without affecting the lighting. And here I am changing it to a nice pale yellow. I switch the shader editor back to object and make a few adjustments before working on the stripe details of our machine. To do this, in edit mode, I create a loop cut around the center and bevel it to split it in two. With those faces still selected, in the material tab, I add another material slot and assign those faces to it. 
I once again make a copy of our material and adjust the colors accordingly. I'm just adjusting the topology a little bit here and using the knife tool so that I can cut out the area for the stripe on the front of our machine. I know the topology here isn't great, but for the purpose of this being a more illustrative piece, I think this is okay. Once again, selecting those faces and assigning them to our second material slot. Adding a third material slot to our machine, I select those faces for the bottom tray and assign the black material to them. Assigning those inside faces to another material slot, I create our interior color. Next, using all the same steps, I apply some materials to our bottles and cans. To get started with Grease Pencil, I create a new collection called GP and add a blank Grease Pencil object. In our Layers tab, I rename our first layer to Mesh. Also make sure to uncheck Use Lights here as I forgot to at this point. And I also rename our first material to Outline. In the Modifier tab, add the Line Art modifier, set the collection to Mesh layer to mesh and material to outline. And just like that, we have an outline on all of our meshes. You'll need to make sure you have a camera in your scene at this point, as with this modifier, all the lines are drawn from the camera angle. Just adjusting the line thickness here till I find something that looks nice. Under the Edge Types tab in our material, I change it from Contour to Individual Silhouette and uncheck Crease. I like to have control of where the lines are drawn within my object, and I'll show you a little trick for doing that in just a second. Also make sure to check Material Borders here, as that will draw a line wherever there's a separate material, such as our white stripes and the labels on the bottles. Since the lines are drawn from the camera, anytime you're out of your camera view, things will look a little bit weird. Now for drawing lines exactly where you want them, in edit mode, select all the edges you want drawn, right click and hit mark freestyle edge. Any edge that has been marked will be drawn within the line art modifier. Here's where I realized I got a little ahead of myself and forgot to actually fill out the machine. I'm doing so just by duplicating objects again, but also creating linked duplicates with Alt-D. This means that any edits I make to one of them, such as the material, will be copied over to the others. I then grab all the bottles and put them within their own collection just to keep things organized. Here I thought we could do with a bit more color variation, so I'm just changing up the materials on some of these. I also thought these panels could do with a bit more detail, so I'm just 
inserting some faces and assigning them to a new material slot. Lastly, I'm just adjusting the color of our outline in the grease pencil material, as I don't like to use pure black for the lines. Here I change it to a sort of deep blue color. And now we've made it to the real fun part. In our grease pencil object, I add a new layer on top of mesh called line art and uncheck use lights. Tabbing into draw mode, we'll now be able to draw on top of our mesh. To do so, we have to make sure our stroke placement at the top there is set to surface. And you may need to adjust the offset setting in here. If the value is too low, your strokes will start intersecting with the mesh. And if it's too high, you'll be drawing miles away from your object. This setting can be quite finicky and you may need to adjust it as you're drawing. Before I start, I quickly add an empty plane axis object, name it camera control and parent my camera to it. This means I can quickly use that to rotate around the center of my scene. And so our drawing begins. I start by going over the edge closest to us breaking up the line every so often to create a bit of interest and detail. Also a quick note on our brush settings, I have the radius set to the same thickness as our outline and I have the strength set to 1. Pen pressure is turned off for both of them as with this style I don't want any changes in thickness or strength as I'm drawing. I spend most of the time drawing directly from the camera view and just rotating it slightly every so often to see how it looks at different angles. There isn't really a process I'm following here as I'm drawing, I just like to accentuate the corners and edges of things, breaking up the lines as well as I go for a little bit of interest. So I recommend just having fun, diddling away here and finding what looks good to you. If you make any mistakes, you can hold control and this will switch your brush to the eraser and you can remove any unwanted strokes. Here are my eraser settings, as I believe by default the eraser is quite soft, whereas this will cut the strokes quite harshly. Here you can see it's helpful sometimes to enable wireframe in your overlays, just to see exactly where on the mesh you're drawing. Here I'm creating another material in our grease pencil object and changing it to white just to draw in this little switch here. Also remember you can make use of all the drawing tools on the left to make it easier to draw lines, curves and circles as I'm about to do here with this sort of hatching pattern at the bottom. Also, you can hide the mesh layer if the line art modifier is getting a little bit in your way. You may get some weird strokes like this, but since Grease Pencil is made up of points, you can just tab into edit mode and adjust them. Next, rotating the camera around to the front, I start to draw in the details of the bottle labels. I make a few more materials here as well just to create some variation. I didn't like how some of those strokes were appearing in front of our line art, so I created a new layer called Bottles, moved it below our mesh layer, and in edit mode selected all those strokes we just drew, and by hitting M moved them to the Bottles layer. Next, I turned my attention to the ground plane 
and wanted to draw in a few strokes to create the effect of stone tiles. Holding shift here stabilizes your stroke and allows you to draw much smoother lines. I'm also hiding the machine here just so I can draw a few strokes underneath. Now it's time to draw some grass coming up through those tiles. So I create a new layer called grass, put it on top and create a new grass material, this time with a fill color. We'll need to change our stroke placement mode now to 3D cursor. And by holding shift and right clicking, you can move that cursor anywhere you want and your strokes will be drawn from that point. I'm also making sure to lock my other layers here as when I erase, I don't want to accidentally erase other layers. I started with the drawing plane mode at the top set to view, but I realized I wanted the grass to come up at perpendicular angles with the lines that I drew on the ground. So I switched this back and forth from front and side. Enabling canvas in your overlays allows you to see exactly the plane that you're drawing on. I also sometimes switch back to my line material just to draw over the bottom edge of the grass. Another useful button is the two squares next to draw mode at the top left here. This allows you to draw at the back of your layer as by default every new stroke is placed on top. I created another grass material here for the parts that are in shadow. For an extra bit of detail, I created a new material and layer for stones and switched my drawing plane back to view. I also thought our vending machine could do with a bit more detail, so I created a new layer for stickers changed our stroke placement back to surface and created a couple new materials with fills for that. And finally, I switched back to my line material to give those stickers a bit more detail. Before we render this out, I like to create a very simple camera animation. So switching our bottom window back to timeline I input a few rotation keyframes using our camera control object, taking care not to rotate too far as doing so might break the illusion of some of our grease pencil drawings, like our grass. To make a nice loop, make sure your first and final keyframes are the same. Before rendering this out, in your grease pencil object, under view layer properties, 
you want to make sure that combined and Z is checked, otherwise they may not render properly. And you're ready to render it out. Here are all my output settings. I like to render both a video and the individual frames for stills and for making GIFs. I hope you found some of this useful and if you did follow along or created something of your own with the same techniques, I'd love to see it. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram. And if you enjoy my work, you can support me over on Ko-fi. I hope to have some goodies up there soon as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you around.